Hi guys, this is SDJ Arsenal 88 speaking with another update on the World War One Trench Railway. Now, as you know, the letters had its first few outings, and uh, in between shows, I've been gradually working on uh, little bits and pieces, adding a few things, and updating a few little bits and uh, bobs on the layer as well. So I've done quite a bit recently, so I thought it's time for uh, a much overdue update on the layer. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. So what have I been doing over the past few months? Well really I've just been um, making sure that the layout is ready for the uh, quite uh, large amount of number of shows this year. Uh, the two next uh, up and coming shows, which are very very close now, are the Seven Valley Railway Open House Weekend and this is the event I'm really really looking forward to. It's something a bit different, it's of course at the Seven Valley Railway. And basically, there'll be about 30 layouts that'll be dotted along the route of the uh, railway itself. So there'll be a number of layouts in the diesel depot at Kidderminster, and then a number of layouts, including, uh, from what I understand, um, the Trench Railway, um, at Highley in the Engine House um, Museum. And from what I understand from the organisers, once I handed in my paperwork, uh, they've decided to put the layouts quite appropriately in front of Gordon, the uh, Longmore Military Railway uh, 2100 austerity locomotive. So I thought it was quite a, a nice sort of a fitting place to put the layout in front of a WD loco. So yeah, so if you're going to that event, uh, do pop along and of course come and say hi and uh, see the layout. And of course all the other wonderful uh, layouts that will be there. And of course, um, taking a trip on the wonderful Seven Valley Railway. Uh, two weeks after that event, uh, the layout is then off on another railway outing. Uh, this time to the Avon Valley Railway. Again, uh, the event is along similar lines uh, with lots of model railways and uh, miniatures on display at uh, Bitten. The event will be called uh, Boys and Their Toys. It's the first time the, uh, the railway has put on this event. So it'd be, again, this would be quite an exciting little show to get to. And much like the Seven Valley Railway, uh, you could take a trip on the Avon Valley Railway, which is a lovely little route. Uh, and then of course, uh, take a look at all the wonderful uh, models and miniatures on display there. So I look forward to hopefully seeing you guys at uh, those events in the not too distant future. So one of the things that I've actually added to the layout in recent months, or improved on, is uh, basically a bit of painting. Uh, the first of which is these artillery shells. Now, as you saw in previous uh, videos, and uh, if you came along to the uh, previous shows that the layout has been to, uh, these, artillery, uh, these spent artillery shells uh, that are to the left of the howitzer there are, were actually uh, grey. And I had a few people comment on them saying that they should be uh, bronze, which of course uh, the um, artillery shell casing actually was. And I totally agreed, and basically I never got round to actually painting them before the first show. And uh, basically I ran out of time the second time round as well. But as you can see, I finally got round to it, and they really do look the part. It does add a, a nice little sort of glow to the area. And you can see they've all been sort of muddied up, uh, and they, it basically just is a different colour to the landscape. Uh, as you can see, everything's quite a lot of brown and grey, so to have something metallic, it sort of does stand out and draws the eye to them. Uh, which is really, really good, and it's something that I'm, I'm really, really pleased with. So I've also been working on improving the uh, many figures that are dotted about on the layout. Uh, we're currently looking at the Airfix uh, figures, which are located in the little campsite uh, next to the rundown workshop. Now what I've gone and done with these and all the other figures is I've gone over them with a wash. Uh, I found the uniforms were a bit uh, too light, especially on the Airfix figures. Uh, so I went over with this sort of darker shadowy wash. Uh, which was uh, part of the special uh, paint uh, set that I got for painting World War I uh, British, British uh, infantry. And basically I've uh, toned down their uniforms and they're, they're a lot more uh, better now. Uh, the wash also has improved some of the details and highlighted some of the details on their faces and their hands as well, which is really, really nice. There's still a bit more work I want to do, especially on these Airfix figures. Uh, but for now, I'm quite pleased with them. Uh, they certainly um, have improved uh, since the last time I sort of uh, I, since I put them in place. So I'm very, very pleased with that. So we're now going to take a look at some of the other figures 
that I have um, uh, been uh, worked on on the layout and of course uh, added to the layout as well. So here are the uh, figures that are located by the howitzer. And as you can see, like the Airfix figures, I've gone over them with a bit of a wash to sort of dull down their uniforms a bit more. But I've also uh, added another figure to this little scene. You can see the chap standing there on the right with his hands on his hips there, uh, next to the artillery shells. That is a military police officer. Now, uh, basically, I've added him there uh, as he looks like he's sort of giving a few orders to the um, artillery men there. And uh, yeah, I just think he sort of fits in the scene there quite well. Um, he looks like he's uh, of, of authority there, of his, the way that his uh, posture is there. Uh, so I thought he'd, he'd be quite nice there and sort of adds to that uh, little scene as well. So here is the second of three military police officers. Uh, they all came in a little pack. And uh, basically I've located this one at the end of the passing loop. Uh, and I thought this figure fits in here very, very well. As you can see, uh, once you put his arm on, uh, he is actually holding his arm up, obviously, to uh, possibly like a uh, flag down uh, traffic or uh, tanks or other bits and pieces, um, you know, in, in a diorama of some sort. But as you can see, he fits in here very, very well, uh, as if he's uh, almost like he's uh, signalling and uh, flagging down uh, the trains. So I've basically gone with the sort of story that this guy is actually a signalman and as you can see he operates the uh, pair of points here uh, for arriving and uh, basically dispatching trains to and from the front. And as you can see he's got his arm up there and he's obviously stopped the uh, Baldwin to uh, allow uh, a train to come back from the front line and then of course in a moment he will uh, dispatch uh, the Baldwin to the front line with its uh, supplies and uh, munitions uh, for the front. And here is the third and final uh, military police officer. And as you can see, he is basically handing over some orders uh, to the uh, bus driver there uh, for obviously um, taking the uh, wounded uh, away from uh, the front uh, to a possible field hosp hospital on the, the little bus there. And you can see he's got a notepad in his hand and basically he's writing down the orders. Uh, to hand over to the driver to obviously um, uh, who will obviously follow them. So I've, again, I thought that's a nice little scene, and it adds to the sort of the effect there that the bus is waiting to pick up uh, wounded um, servicemen and take them to that field hospital. So yes, yeah, so I'm very very pleased with how this uh, another little sort of uh, cameo has come out, and we will now take a look at one of the things that um, I've basically uh, I've been very very pleased with, and it's one of the things I've been wanting to actually add to the layout. Uh, ever since I started it. So without further ado, we're just going to pan around slightly and uh, show you what I'm uh, on about. And here it is. It is, of course, the start of a troop train. Now, uh, as mentioned, this is something I've really wanted to depict on the layout uh, once I started the uh, project. Uh, but as you can imagine, this sort of uh, creating this sort of uh, one little carriage here has been extremely time consuming um, and requires a lot of patience, uh, a lot of very, very careful paintwork and uh, a lot of uh, very careful assembly as well. So as you can see here, we've got one of those uh, wonderful uh, Batman uh, WD open wagons. Uh, and uh, basically I've um, added a number of these uh, wonderful WD figures to them. Now uh, I will go into a bit more detail about um, WD models in a moment and I'll basically show you how these, uh, these figures start off uh, life as. But as you can see, I've got a number of them here. They're actually a mixture of figures here. There are two whole packs of the WD models uh, sitting or uh, resting infantry. And there's also the chap on the end there, uh, to the far left of the shot, who you can see he's got his hand on the brake. Uh, he is part of the brakeman pack, uh, which is three figures in that pack and he is the one that's sort of sitting down and as you can see he fits perfectly on the edge of the uh, wagon there. Now these uh, figures are not permanent, I've put a little tiny bit of cardboard in the bottom of the wagon uh, that fits nice and snug and I've basically glued the figures uh, to that cardboard so if I just sort of grab hold of the ends I can lift all the figures out and they'll stay in that sitting position and the wagon could be used as an empty open wagon as well. 
But uh, basically, uh, these figures, um, as you can see, they fit in there very, very well. And I was chatting to Barry of WD Models. He saw my pictures uh, that I posted on various groups uh, showing um, this wagon being assembled. And uh, the funny thing was, these wrestling figures were basically designed for sitting on boxes and other bits and pieces. And they were never really intended to um, sit in uh, wagons. But as you can see, um, a bit forward thinking on Barry's half here, but they absolutely fit perfectly in these wagons. They are the absolute perfect height for the edge of the uh, wagon sides. And as you can see, they sit in there absolutely perfectly. And really, you couldn't get more perfect figures to actually fit in there. So I've bought a few more of these and a number of other sort of uh, sitting figures uh, from his collection. And basically, I have got to assemble these and uh, basically um, fill up another wagon. So hopefully we'll have another, uh, at least another wagon uh, with these uh, troops in, uh, possibly even a third, as I really do think they add to the scene, although they do take a long time um, to put together. I mean, this creating this little wagon here has taken the best part of two weeks uh, with uh, all the painting and assembly of the figures. And then, of course, um, putting them into position, which, of course, is very, very fiddly. Uh, but as you can see, and I hope you agree, it really is well worth it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a quick look at a, a recent order that's just arrived and basically show you how these figures start off life as. So here is my latest order from WD Models. Um, I've opened up the box um, so I can show you guys. So anyway, um, this is uh, the man in question, uh, Barry. So here is a look at his little business card. Um, I'll put a link to his website in the description below. Uh, but basically, this is the website you need to go to for any uh, thing, uh, items, figures, uh, vehicles, uh, and even narrow gauge uh, trench railway stock uh, for your 009 World War One trench railway. So this is the man to go to. So anyway, Barry's a really, really nice chap. And uh, this is my latest order. So this is, as I mentioned, some more figures for um, creating a second wagon for the troop train you've just seen. So uh, this is how the figures come, um, straight from the box. So as you can see, we've got a lovely little bubble wrapped packet. And in here, we've got a number of figures. I'll just pop those down there because uh, those are slightly different ones. But as you can see here, we've got two packs of figures. And these are the figures in question that I had in the back of the... Um, the train there and as you can see they are uh, WD-63 uh, British Infantry uh, with a full kit and it says uh, resting and as you can see they all come uh, unpainted uh, not assembled they've got their rifles there you need to put on them or their little uh, bags and uh, ammo uh, cartridges and stuff like that that they carry and as you can see they're all in sort of resting and sitting positions and you can see that you need to put their arms and their heads and other bits and pieces on them as well. So you can see why it's taken me quite a while to assemble that little carriage there. So anyway, I've got uh, another pack of these. And then for something a bit different, I came across these. Now there are five figures in that pack. And this pack here is a WD-62 uh, British uh, passengers for the old Bill bus. Now um, the bus on the layer is an old Bill bus. And basically my idea for these uh, passages is to put some of them in that bus uh, but the majority of them are like the resting infantry or in sitting positions so I think most of these will also end up as part of a troop train but you can see again they all need assembling painting and uh, yeah it really is uh, great fun to do and it's just it's, I find it quite therapeutic painting these little figures and they really are really well made um, these are resin ones, you could also get, uh, he also has uh, white metal ones, but he's moving more into resin, which I feel is a lot more better to work with, as, and they're a lot more easier to glue together as well, I find. But anyway, um, as mentioned, I've bought a lot of stuff from Barry for this layer over the uh, uh, past couple of months, and uh, anyway, uh, Barry dropped me a message, and he kindly included in this packet um, a lovely um, Austin armoured car. Uh, kit for me to build uh, as sort of a, a sort of a thank you for um, my custom for over the uh, past couple of months, which I thought was really really nice, and it really did, does mean a lot. That and he uh, he's basically said that he's been following my project from day one, and uh, basically he uh, he was wondering when um, when I placed my first order that when I was going to get in contact with him because he'd been following my railway before long before I even knew about him, 
And uh, so yeah, he was really, really impressed with what I was doing. And then of course I bought my first lot of figures from him and it really sort of went from there. So I, I can't recommend this guy enough. And I, I can't thank him enough for um, including this lovely little kit and I'll have great fun in building this kit. Um, the reason why he's included this specific car is because this Austin armored car, this type, was only saw uh, battle, uh, well, it was introduced during the Battle of Amiens, which is, of course, the uh, battle which the layer is set. So this will be a really, really lovely feature to fit on the layer as well. And uh, that little bag that I just showed you uh, earlier on, that is actually the uh, figures for the Austin Armoured car as well. So he's kindly included those as well. And this is what I look forward to uh, building and adding to the layer in the not too distant future. So anyway, all the information for his website, um, links and um, in the description below. Uh, I thought I'd include this because I know that quite a lot of you have been asking uh, where I've been getting these figures from and how, I, how I've created them sort of thing. And uh, yeah, so I highly recommend Barry and his uh, amazing uh, uh, selection of World War I items. And really, I couldn't have done this layout without half of his products. So anyway, um, big thank you to Barry and uh, do check him out. The main thing, however, that's been taking up most of my time uh, in between um, the shows and, of course, the previous update, is weathering the rolling stock. Now, as some of you saw in um, the previous show video, especially at the Gartel, you will notice that I had finally got round to weathering uh, one of the locomotives, which was the German Brigade Lock locomotive and its matching water cart tender, along with the uh, US uh, bogey cars. I recently did a little video uh, slideshow showing uh, pictures of uh, the transformation of that locomotive. Well, I finally got round to weathering pretty much every item of rolling stock, um, apart from the uh, two German ambulance cars and the German open wagon at the moment. Uh, pretty much every other item of rolling stock is done. And as you can see, this is the latest um, item to be weathered, which is of course the Mini Trains Baldwin. And I am very, very pleased with how this has turned out. Uh, it's I've given it uh, basically an oily wash uh, to basically uh, look like it's picked up dirt and uh, soot and of course um, oil from where it's been um, travelling to and from the trenches. You can see where the crew have obviously uh, wiped it down with oily rag. This is something I've noticed in uh, pictures. The locomotives never really seem to get, especially steam locomotives surprisingly, never seem to get uh, very muddy. Of course I suppose this was because the steam locomotives tended to stay further back from the front so they never really got to any of the places where the serious mud and uneven track was to. So basically, um, they were sort of quite well kept by their crews. Uh, I suppose there was uh, a bit of pride uh, among the uh, operators and crews of these locomotives, so they probably did their best um, in between uh, time to actually keep these locomotives clean, and it's quite evident from the pictures that they did. So what I've gone and done with this effect here is I've gone over it to give it sort of an oily rag effect, to give the effect that the uh, crew have obviously um, at some point uh, managed to find the time to give it a bit of a rub down but as you can see it's still a very well worked locomotive. Uh, off to the left of the uh, locomotive there you can see the tail end of a uh, the tipper train and you can see that um, I've also got round, round to weathering and adding a load to the tippers as well. I've basically gone and used the same um, wood filler that I've used to actually create the mud effect on the layout, I've basically filled all 12 of those hoppers as well as weathered them. And I've also added in a few little shovels and stuff as well. So what we're going to do now is take a few, um, take a look at a few clips of some of this uh, new weathered stock uh, in action. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll be able to let me know uh, what you think. Uh, one thing uh, to watch out for is the uh, Decoville, uh, the little black uh, 060 locomotive, which has uh, WD uh, markings on the side of it. Now, basically, I, there was a bit of a, a try, it was a bit of a trial to get those WD markings on there, but they really do bring that little locomotive to life. Uh, so I think the uh, next sort of uh, clip show uh, will start off with that locomotive, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see the uh, tiny little markings I've actually added to it. And I really am uh, pleased with how that locomotive turned out as well. So without further ado, uh, let's take a look at some of these uh, locomotives in action.
the two recent arrivals are these stunning uh, Batman WD bogey vans. Now I've had these on order uh, for um, quite a while now along with of course the uh, open bogey wagons which you have seen in previous videos and just recently as well with the troops in uh, and hopefully the soon to be released Baldwins which as you can imagine I'm very very much looking forward to. But anyway these wagons arrived ironically the day just before the Gartel show and I had these on order over at Signals Models and uh, the kind staff over there actually, um, uh, Mike and Elaine, actually uh, popped into the Gartel show to see the, the layout uh, for the first time and they kindly brought along these two wagons with them so they um, let me uh, purchase them at the show and as you can see um, they really are stunning and all credit to Batman, they really have done an absolutely outstanding job in capturing these wagons and in doing so have taken, well I feel, um, ready to run uh, wagons uh, to a whole new level. These um, wagons as you can see actually have opening doors, uh, you can change the position of the two side doors on each side and of course as well the little end doors uh, which really took me by surprise as well and uh, you can see uh, especially on the wagon there on the uh, right I've opened up the end door and you could just get a little glimpse of the interior there as well. Now whilst we're on the subject of interiors, um, these wagons both have fully detailed interiors which is something completely different as well. And inside these wagons, I'll do a little separate video showing a closer look, at, uh, taking a closer look at them. Uh, but they have uh, all the stretcher racks uh, all stacked up in there and basically awaiting for uh, injured uh, servicemen to take them away from the front line. And this is something I hope to add to these wagons at uh, some um, at some point, hopefully in the not too distant future. But yeah, they really are stunning, and I highly recommend. They really are worth every penny. They are quite pricey, uh, but um, as you can see, they really are worth it. So I can highly recommend, and I really do look forward uh, for, to the uh, arrival of the Baldwins um, and having them uh, hoarding these wagons around on the layout. Hopefully, uh, very soon. So as you've probably seen uh, throughout this update, you've uh, probably come to realise that the layer is actually not in the loft, but actually in the conservatory. Now this is for a very, very good reason. And as you know, a couple of uh, months ago, back in January, I basically said there's a couple of big surprises coming. And one of them involved the trench railway. And basically, the reason why it's set up in here is for that purpose. Now again, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it. Uh, but it's happening in the next couple of days and I'm very, very excited about this and uh, you know, it really uh, is something quite special and uh, something that um, I never thought would ever happen. Uh, but basically, um, I'm just preparing the layout for it and so it's in a nice space, a nice light area. And uh, hopefully I will be able to do a little video on the day uh, to show you uh, hopefully uh, what I'm on about and the, basically the little, uh, well the big surprise uh, which involves the layout. So anyway, I uh, hope you will all enjoyed this update. Um, there's still, of course, things to improve on and things to add on, on. Of course, I've got lots more figures as you've seen to paint. I've got that beautiful armoured car uh, from Barry of WD Models uh, to assemble and paint up and, of course, locate on the layout there at some point as well. And then, of course, we've got lots more shows to come as well this year. Um, we're now moving into the sort of the summary period and um, you know springtime and uh, summer there's a few shows around then and then of course after summer we really do get busy with the layout uh, so yeah it's going to be a very exciting year for the layout and I hope that you can uh, come and uh, join me and uh, see the layout uh, in the flesh at one of those shows um, as you uh, know I'll put a little link in the description below and of course at the top of the video now as well uh, with uh, my little video which has all the dates uh, for these shows uh, but I've recently had another one confirmed. Uh, I'm just filling out the paperwork now for it, which is uh, Rail Wells, uh, which is at the beginning of August. Uh, and uh, that one is uh, a big show in, of course, the lovely city of Wells, which is uh, quite local to where I'm to. And it really, really is a good show. So I highly recommend, um, if you're in the area, uh, do pop along and see that one. And that one is, of course, in the half-term summer holidays. So it really is a nice sort of event as well. And there's uh, quite a lot of families and stuff there to go as well to... Uh, to see it. So I highly recommend uh, coming to see me at that show as well if you can. So anyway, um, that's all for this update and hopefully there'll be uh, another update in the not too distant future and of course 
hopefully, fingers crossed, a special little video, um, hopefully uh, showing the uh, big announcement very soon. So anyway, uh, this has been SDJR Center 88 speaking, and uh, thanks for watching.